Hello and welcome to the Excel One SAM Projects tutorial video. To complete this project you will first begin by logging into the sam2010.course.com website and logging in with your username and password which is probably your WKU email address including at topper.wku.edu uh, but check with your instructor for certain on that. And then once you've logged in you want to come over to the SAM Assignments link and select the assignment that you're going to be working on. In this case, it is Excel 1. You select on Excel 1, you'll have five attempts to submit this project. Hopefully we'll be able to get it done in less than five attempts, but you've got those attempts and it's very nice to have those. As with all projects, once you click on the project, you'll see a link for the instructions that you will follow in completing the assignment and also a link for the personalized start file that you will edit in step one and rename in step one and work through as you complete the project. So first let me download and open my instructions. I click on the instruction file and I'll open that up and see what I've got here in my window. Uh, I'll click enable editing even though I don't plan on editing this but just so that window goes away. And what I'll see here is that we're building a spreadsheet and there's actually a figure at the beginning that shows us what our spreadsheet is going to look like. Now this is our very first Excel spreadsheet so this data uh, has a lot of color and, and font style and a chart there with some bars and it might look pretty intimidating but I think what you're going to find as we work through this project that Excel is a very powerful and very easy to use tool and we can get this project completed without too much difficulty. Our first step of the instructions is to open the file that they've provided for us with the name SC Excel 2010 C1 L1A underscore and then your name underscore one XLSX and save the file as the same thing underscore two with the XLSX extension. XLSX is the extension for Excel from Excel 2007, uh, 2010 and beyond. So let's get that file from our uh, web browser. Click on that file and I will open it up and then once I have it opened I'll enable editing so that I can then save this with a different name. Remember the difference between save and save as. With save as you get to change either the name or the location or both of where the work is being saved. So I want to change the name. I'm also going to change the location because I'm going to save it onto my desktop. So I'm going to save it on my desktop and I'm going to save it with an underscore two and leave the XLSX extension unchanged. So now I've got this saved on my desktop. I know where it is when I choose to upload my work here in a little bit. Going back to my instruction document. Oops, I can hit Alt Tab and I can move between these. Going to my instruction document, it says to verify that your name appears in cell B4 of the documentation sheet. So going back to Excel, I can see that there are four sheets in this project, in this workbook. Uh, documentation that is well formatted. It has the student name in cell B4, just like I'm expecting to see it. I've also got sheet 1, sheet 2, and sheet 3, and these sheets are blank. They're just empty row uh, row column combinations that intersect in cells. So I'm starting with basically a blank spreadsheet and that's perfectly fine. We're going to work through this blank spreadsheet and create something that looks a lot like the figure there at the beginning of our instructions. Step 2. Switch to the Sheet 1 worksheet by clicking on the Sheet 1 tab at the bottom of the workbook. This entire thing is called a workbook and this workbook contains four sheets and as I click on the worksheet tabs at the bottom it changes the active or the front sheet. Now I have sheet one active as stated in the instructions and uh, after I do that it says to change the title or to enter a worksheet title a healthy body shop in cell A1. Now as a reminder we have columns A, B, and C, and we have rows 6, 7, and 8. Columns have letters, rows have numbers, and columns and rows intersect in cells. So D4 is an intersection of a cell, and in these cells we can type numbers, we can type text, we can type formulas, and we can type functions. I'm supposed to go, according to my instructions, to the cell A1, and I'm supposed to type in the title, A Healthy Body Shop. 
Healthy Body Shop. Now, there's nothing special about A1. A1 doesn't always have to have a title, but because it happens to be at the top of my worksheet, it makes sense to call it a title. Just like if you were in a word processor, you might put a title on a research paper. It appears at the beginning, but there's nothing special about the text you type. It's just what we call, or a signature line in a, in a footer, in a letter. It just lets you know uh, conceptually what the purpose of this text is. This text is going to serve as the title of this worksheet that I'm building, a healthy body shop. Uh, it also says to type a subtitle, Annual Revenue Analysis in A2. And, oops, have the caps lock, Annual Revenue Analysis. That's what I have typed in cell A2. Okay, great. Step 3 says, beginning in row 3, uh, enter a franchise locations, fitness activities, and annual revenues shown in Table 1. So here in Table 1, on my next page of my instructions, I can see some franchise locations, Atlanta, Boston, New York, Phoenix, and Portland. I have fitness activities, aquatics, cardiovascular, dance, weight training, yoga, and stretching. And I also have revenues for each city and each activity, and I have a list of those numbers there. And I'm going to type this data in to my worksheet. Specifically, the locations, Atlanta, Boston, New York, Phoenix, Portland, go in the cells B3 to F3. That's called a range when you have two cells with a colon between them like that. You're talking about multiple adjacent contiguous cells, cells that are touching each other. And B3, F3 is the range that gets the titles. So let me change uh, my instruction document, make it a little bit smaller here so that I can see my worksheet in the background and my instruction document in the foreground as I'm doing this. B3, F3 is this range right here. Those five cells are going to be my five locations. So Atlanta, Boston, New York, Phoenix, and Portland. And then it says in our instructions that the range A4, A8 contains the categories. A4, A8, that range there is where my categories are going to go. And those categories are aquatics, cardiovascular, dance, weight training, and yoga and stretching. And then the rest of this step is we're supposed to enter uh, locations, fitness activities, and the annual revenues. So I've got to enter all this data into my spreadsheet. So I can type these in one at a time. That's going to take a little bit of time. 72528.50 so instead of typing these in one at a time while you watch, I'm going to use the magic of time delay, and I'll get these typed in, and we'll come right back. Okay, we're back, and we're finished typing these values in. And so we're ready to move on to our next step. Step four. Enter the text total in cells G3 and A9. So cell G3 is right here, and I can enter the text T-O-T-A-L. And also in A9, type the text T-O-T-A-L, total. So I've got the word total appearing in these cells. And again, uh, cells can contain text, or they can contain numbers, and they can also contain formulas and functions, which we're about to see happen here. In the range G4 to G8, use the sum function so G4 to G8 in this range, we're going to type, use the sum function in each one of these. So let's do the first one first, G4. I want to get the sum of aquatics uh, across the five locations. So I say equals sum, left parenthesis, and then the, uh, the cells to be summed together. I can just highlight my mouse by pressing and holding the mouse. I can highlight that range B4, F4, or I could have typed in B4, F4. Either way, right parenthesis and press enter. Now, what you see in this cell G4 is very interesting. What I actually have typed 
is uh, can be seen up here in the visual window at the top. I can see that I actually have typed the sum equals, and the fact that it begins with an equals is very important. Formulas and functions begin with an equals. That's how Excel knows that you're not typing in the text sum, S-U-M, but I want it to interpret that sum to be a calculated value, a uh, dynamically calculated value. And the range of the cells that I'm summing are B4, F4. So as these values change, the sum is automatically recalculated. But in my spreadsheet, I don't see the word sum. I see the results of the sum. It's actually a calculated value. Okay, So that's great. So I typed in the sum there. And I could do the same thing in this next. I could say equals to begin a formula or a function. The word sum that I'm being uh, the function in question, left parenthesis, the range, and I could highlight or type in B5 colon here, I'm just typing it in, F5, right parenthesis, and that works. So I can drag and drop that range, B5, F5, or I can type it in manually. And I could do that for all five of those values. Now a nice little shortcut of Excel is the ability, once you have a formula or a function, is you can select it and then grab the lower right hand corner of the cell containing the formula or function and you can drag it down and it copies those through all the, uh, through, uh, copies the formula in all the cells that I uh, drug it through. A quick way of verifying that these are correct is I can move using the arrow keys, I can move my cursor around or I can select with the mouse one of these cells and I can see in the visual window here that I have the sum of B8 F8 and that makes sense and in this case I'm on uh, uh, row 7 I can see it's the sum of B7 F7 another nice thing is if you double click in the middle of a cell with a formula it will make these the formula itself appear in the cell and it will highlight for you the parameters of that formula, the cells that are being applied to that formula. So I can see that uh, function. So I can see that the uh, function sum is being applied to B7F7, and that's what I'm wanting to add up in that case. Atlanta, Boston, New York, Phoenix, and Portland. I'm adding those together. Okay, so just a nice way of kind of verifying what I've done there. So I've done this first part. G4, G8 has the sum function. And now I want to do B9F9, which is this cell over to this cell. I want to do the same thing, but I want to sum uh, by city. So equals sum of these five values, right parenthesis to close the formula. I'm sorry, the function. Um, and I, now that I have this, uh, the sum function calculated for this cell, I can go to the lower right hand corner. I can just drag it across and get all those values summed up. I can verify the same way as before, double clicking in the center of the cell containing the uh, the formula and the function and I can see the results, all the cells that are being impacted by it. The last part of this instruction says that in cell G9 use the sum function to sum up G4, G8. So in cell G9 I want to sum up G4, G8 sum g4 to g8 right parenthesis okay great we've done step four we're now on to step five and we want to say format the worksheet title in cell a1 with the title cell style so up here in a1 right where we typed in a healthy body shop i want to apply a cell style so in the home tab there is a styles group and in the styles group there is a drop down thing called the uh, cell styles now depending on how wide your screen is it might look like this cell styles and if you have enough width to it microsoft determines uh, it resizes the contents of your ribbon based on the con uh, the width of your screen and there i'm zooming it out larger and things are changing to the right off of the scroll space as it gets smaller things that ribbon uh, gets more and more compact so it's doing its best to hide those in but your ribbon's not always going to look exactly like my ribbon does depending on the width of your excel window and the width of uh, the excel window in the video but under cell styles regardless of whether it looks this way or the other way. Under Cell Styles, if you click on that, you have a list of some options to choose from here, and only about half of those are showing up on the screen right now, but I can apply these here. In this case, I'm trying to do the title style, and it doesn't appear on the screen, so I'm going to scroll this back a little bit more, and then I'll be able to see 
uh, in the cell styles window there's heading 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 in the middle and then there's title so I'm going to apply the title style and then uh, the instructions say to merge and center the title style across A through G so I'll select A move through G and then uh, in this window in the home tab in the alignment group there is this merge and center button and I can select this merge and center button and that A1 cell is being merged through G1. Format the worksheet subtitle in A2 to be 11 point Verdana font dark blue text to font color and then merge and center that. So I will select A2 I will make it 11 point I will make it Verdana font which is down in the V's so I'll scroll down whoops scroll down to the V's there's a Verdana font in the V's and I will apply a font color and again the font color is in the home tab in the font group and there's a background fill color and then there is the text font color and the little pop-up text if you read that it tells you here we're talking about the background color you can see it says color the background or selected cells and this it says for font color change the text colors that's like the pen color that you're writing with and this is what we're changing in this case is the font color to be dark blue text too and I click on the drop down arrow to the right of the option here and I see my theme colors where I have background one uh, text one background two text two and then I have six different uh, accents, accent one, accent two, all the way through accent six. The actual colors associated with background one, text one, background two, text two, and accent one through accent six depend on the selected theme. In our case, for the current default selected theme, text two has dark blue as the text, as the color associated with it, and that's what we're supposed to select according to our step six instructions. So I select that, and then it says to merge and center across A through G. So I select A through G for this uh, row 2 and again I select merge and center. Okay, very good. Moving right along, we're on step 7. Use the cell styles to format the range A3 G3 with a heading 3 cell style. A3 G3 is right here and I want to select the range first and then apply the heading 3 cell style. And again, the cell style, I don't think it's going to appear um, on my window heading 3 is right there okay and then A4 G8 so A4 G8 that whole area has a 40 percent accent 6 cell style and that barely shows up in the window but it's there uh, accent 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 40 percent accent 6 I can select that and then finally A9 G9 has the total cell style. So cell styles total, which is just to the right of the headings and the title, is total. And we've done that step completed. Step seven is done. Moving right along. Step eight. Use the buttons in the number group in the home tab ribbon. So I'm going to, uh, in the number group in the home ribbon, I'm going to use these buttons here across the bottom. Not the drop down option, but these. Uh, five buttons here. It says to use one of those buttons in the number group to apply a counting number format to B4, G4. So let's see, here's B4, G4. I'm going to apply a counting number format which is the dollar sign button. It also says to apply it to B9, G9. So I select B9, G9 and I select the dollar sign button which is a counting number format. The instructions then say to use a button in the number group to apply a comma style to the range B5, G8. So that range B5, G8, I use this comma button to apply the comma style. Now what ends up happening now is all this numeric data has uh, commas and decimal points and the dollar signs are used in the uh, row 4 and row 9 and there's no dollar signs in these middle values because they have a different style format. Great! Step 9. Set the width of column A to be 15.86. Now I can change the width a couple of ways. I can grab this bar on the right hand side and I can just 
drag it to a size and I can see it going on there and I can try to position this to be exactly 15.86 or what I can do is I can right click on the column title and I can say column width and then I can type in 15.86 and get it to be exactly what I want it to be quick confirmation if I click on it without resizing it I see it's 15.86 or if I right click and say column width it pops up as 15.86 okay very good step 10 select the chart range select the range sorry a3 f8 and we're getting ready to create a chart based on that range so I need to go into my spreadsheet and I need to select a3 down to f8 so that highlighted area contains data cities and activities and the data associated with them I think that's the data we typed in at the very beginning if you remember and I'm going to now apply I'm going to create a chart from this data specifically a clustered cylinder chart so you have to first select the data and when the data is selected you can say insert and then you can in the charts area I want to do a column chart and there's categories 2d 3d and cylinder and the first option in the cylinder uh, column is this clustered cylinder which is what we're supposed to insert and notice that that nice chart appears in my document automatically so I didn't have to do anything but that uh, pops in I've got you know data on the left hand side and, and rows uh, and columns and, and, and uh, I've got a um, you know the summary table to the right there uh, all of my information and I can make edits to this chart because I have these chart tools that are visible whenever the chart is selected I have a design tab I have a layout tab uh, and again I can change the title the axes the legend on the right hand side I have the data labels the data uh, ta all these things can be edited it's very very powerful and I even have a format option to go into more detail changing the colors of the uh, the bars and so on and in my instructions the first thing I'm supposed to do after I insert this is apply the style 26 chart style so in my uh, chart tools in the design tab there is chart styles and I can see right now selected is the current default which is style 2 if I hit this drop down arrow in the lower right hand corner I can see all of my chart styles and I believe style 26 is right about here and that's it style 26 looks kind of similar but there are some differences we did change the uh, the exact colors a little bit we changed the shading a little bit and this is the preferred style in this case move and resize the chart so the upper left hand corner is in cell A11 and the lower right is in G24 so I'm going to take this chart and I'm going to move it now my cursor sometimes it looks like these four arrows north south east west when I have that look I can drag this entire chart if I'm sometimes it doesn't if I'm on the bars or if I'm on uh, uh, some other places if I'm on the labels I might not get this but I'm in this white space here I can probably grab whoops and see I don't want to do that so if I ever do something wrong I can do control Z to do an undo uh, let me grab the the sides here that's probably the easiest way to do this so if I grab the sides I can drag it down to a11 and it says that the lower right corner is in G24 so this lower right corner right now it's in F28 I want this lower right corner to be in G24 now the thing to notice is that this north south east west icon mean they're going to move the whole chart or something within the chart if I get right on the border here I get this arrow that's up left lower right and that means notice that the top left is not changing it stays in A11 but I'm changing the position of the bottom right of the chart and that's what I want to do G24 is going to be right about here and I can see that I'm dropping this lower right hand corner inside G24 so I'm still in A11 and G24 so that's good and then finally step 11 apply the worksheet name annual revenue analysis to the sheet tab so my sheet tab remember is down here at the bottom so I'm going to take this sheet tab and I'm going to rename it by right clicking and saying rename and I'm going to give this the new name annual revenue analysis and 
apply an orange accent 6 darker 25 color to the tab. So if I right click on this, uh, I'm going to tab click off. I'm, I'm still editing. Notice the, the beam is still editing there. Uh, I can press enter to accept that value and then I can right tab and change the tab color to be orange at accent 6 darker 25 percent and now there's a little bit that's not super easy to see but there's uh, not only is the tab renamed but it also has a color associated with it okay we now have our completed work it looks very much like figure one on our instructions I'm ready to save this work which I already have at the very beginning I already renamed it underscore two on my desktop so I'm ready to uh, I know what I'm doing there uh, I know where it is when I want to upload it and now I'll go here and upload this file so I browse it's on my desktop so there in my desktop underscore two is the file click submit get three check marks hopefully and I have my three check marks and now I just need to wait for this uh, Excel one report uh, results to appear. So let me do a pause and it'll probably be done in about 60 seconds. Okay, I waited a few minutes here, a few seconds, and there it is. Click on the reports link to refresh it, Excel 1 results. Click the download, let's see how we did. And 91 out of 100, so we did very well, but on step 7 here we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 right, 8, 9, 10, and 11 right, but on step 7 uh, I missed part of the instructions here. Text should be center aligned, B3 through G3. That was part of my instructions on step seven, and I must have just missed that. By the way, if I go back and look at this uh, on this sheet, so this grade result summary tab is added to what I submitted. There's my documentation sheet, and then the uh, uh, annual revenue analysis, which used to be sheet one, but we renamed it. And you'll notice that these uh, these comments have been added to the sheet as well so sometimes those are helpful here they're they're kind of overlapping it's the same message but it's telling me that that text should be centered okay so let's do this let's go back to our file so I'm back to the underscore two file not the uh, underscore one underscore three file that I just downloaded right this is the one that doesn't does not have the uh, results summary tab, but it's the one that I actually want to submit. And I forgot to make these things center aligned. So let's center align that text. Okay. Save that. Resubmit. Exam assignments. Excel 1. I have four attempts left. That's good. I already know what I'm doing. I've already made the change. I just want to resubmit it again. So mine's saved on the desktop. Click and submit. Get my three check marks and then wait another 60 seconds and we'll see how we did. And let's uh, see if it's back here. There's our second attempt. So that's good. Let's see if we don't have a perfect score. And we do. Okay. And that is the Excel 1 project.